All right, so here we go. We are setting off on the Indian Challenger here on an Indian Demo Day ride. And we're gonna see what this is all about here. So the fairing seems way more in front of me and way smaller than it does on my road glide. Ooh, she barks a little bit though. A lot of gravel on the road up here, which is always fantastic for whenever you're doing a demo ride. You can't really test much when you're riding over freaking gravel. She got power, definitely. I mean, that was very, very light throttle, but already this feels significantly more powerful and torquey than my road glide. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna give a little rip here. All right, so I mean, it, it boogies. Don't get me wrong, it definitely boogies. It's hard to really get an idea of how fast it goes when you're doing kind of these little group rides here. All right, it, it definitely feels pretty good. Don't get me wrong, like it feels way more powerful than my Harley and it feels way more nimble than my Harley does too. It does not like to rev match at all. I gotta put it in sport mode, I think. Here, so we're gonna go home here. Yeah, that's my problem. Okay, that helped a lot. So the bike didn't want to rev match very well when you're in standard mode. I can't even imagine how bad rain mode is, but when you pop it into sport mode, it's very, very eager to kind of uh, downshift blip a little bit more, which would be a big problem if it wasn't. So we're coming up to a stop here, and yeah, just kind of my first impressions on it is, man, this thing is much, much smaller feeling than my Rogue Glide. Like, in pictures, the fairing looks like it's gonna be about the same size, but man, when you are on this thing, this fairing feels super small. The bike feels way more narrow. Here, let's give another rip. Ah, I just fucking spun the rear tire. Holy shit. Oh, that's freaking awesome. All right, so it, it definitely makes a little more power than my Road Glide does, which again, very, very expected. The torque is there. Man, it feels feels like a really good bike. I'd say one of the best things about the bike too is the way that it wants to um, rev higher. So unlike the Harley, which runs out of life, you know, at the high RPMs and it's torquey down low, this thing just wants to keep ripping through the gears and you could comfortably take this bike all the way to redline. Where the heck's neutral though? Oh, there it is, all right. Interesting. So another nice thing about it is just how tossable it is and the seat height is quite a bit lower as well. So sitting here down, um, I definitely don't feel like I'm as high and stretched at my legs. I do have the adjustable windshield in the lowest position I think here. Yeah, the windshield's low. But just first thoughts, I really, really like this thing. I'm still, again, my biggest thing was I'm not gonna be sold on the looks of this motorcycle. Just that front fairing doesn't exactly do it for me, but you can tell they really wanted to choose their battle wisely. Um, even at this demo day, they have a road glide here that you can ride just to compare it to the uh, Challenger here. And they know that obviously it's gonna be a clean sweep. <laughs> oh, that's freaking hilarious. Yeah, so for a bike that's as heavy, quote unquote, as this thing is, it definitely does not feel that at all. Even like at a stoplight, it feels much, much nimbler than you'd expect it to for something of this size. Clutch engagement's a little bit weird to get used to. thing freaking boogies though like it is not a joke like again it's not fast by any stretch of the imagination I mean it's still a large bagger with a lot of weight behind it but it definitely it, it moves man let's do a little roll race here Oh man, 
it's fun. It's definitely fun. I love doing these demo days just to see what other manufacturers have to offer. I like it. I really like it. This is in a beautiful kind of pearl white color. I mean, don't get me wrong, it still feels like a big bike, but the biggest thing is it doesn't feel as big as my Road Glide. So this bike also has the, uh, the lean angle sensor, so the IMU. Wow, so like that is definitely amazing the way this bike wants to flip around. Wow. Sorry, I'm so speechless in this video here. So I guess after kind of throwing it around like that, this thing is crazy nimble for what it is. This is really the first performance oriented bagger that I've ridden. All the other baggers I've ridden have been, you know, stock or just with some, you know, uh, horsepower bolt-ons. But this is the first bike that I've got, you know, that's a bagger that's going to have the inverted forks, the bigger brakes, the monoshock rear and everything like that. And man, it's really, again, I, I wouldn't even compare this to Harley Davidson. This is a totally different aspect bike. The engine is getting kind of hot for it being liquid cooled, which is interesting to me. But I mean, it's super smooth. Very confidence inspiring through the corners there. Yeah, now that I've got it in the right mode for the uh, engineer sport mode, it definitely uh, is much more eager to downshift. Feels better doing that. Sounds really good. I wonder if this has slip-ons or just the uh, stock exhaust. What do we got on the tank here? So I don't think this has uh, any kind of exhaust mods on it. Here, let's give it another. Yeah, I mean, it, it boogies, man. This feels good. It feels way more nimble than I would have ever expected it to. Good job, Indian. This bike really, really feels great. I like what they got going on here. You did a really good job. I really like the little <laughs> part throttle braps here. Sounds great. Here, we're gonna, we're gonna grip it here. That's the other thing about demo rides is you gotta deal with uh, every other rider's personal skill level, which is different. But wow, th this thing is awesome. So right there, I'm trying to hit these potholes, which is the last thing you do in your own personal uh, motorcycle. But I wanna go over these potholes just to see what this bike feels like you know under uh, some compression here and it's incredible i mean you you really can't feel it at all let's see in six gear oh you're killing my harley so one thing i was looking for there in six gear was just kind of what the cruising rpms are and uh it's definitely got the harley beat there let's get it back up to 60 just to see and it's like 2500 oh so yeah this bike's definitely got slip-ons because as he rolled past me there I was listening to it and uh, mine sounds way, way different than his bike does. So this thing actually has a nice little bar to it with some slip-ons. Let's give it a little wrap under here. She feels good. If this is the kind of motorcycle I was looking for, it would uh, definitely have some strong contention in my mind here. Sorry, it doesn't make any sense. If this is the kind of motorcycle that I was looking for, you'd be hard pressed not to buy something like this. I mean, this bike handles very well, sounds great while doing it, and again, I think I have slip-ons here, but here, we're just gonna leave in second gear, kind of winding out. Really wanna push this in a little bit harder. Woo! <laughs> this is crazy. Wow! I have to check out the lean angle of this bike just to see uh, what the actual statistic is of it versus my Harley because I do not feel like my Rogue Glide can lean that far here. Dude, this thing is gnarly under acceleration. Again, it's not fast, but when you get on a bagger, you definitely don't expect it to be able to rip the way that this thing is ripping around. I mean, it is an absolute blast. It moves, man. 
So the, the one question I really wonder with this bike though, is is this something that you'd really want to get on and ride across the country with? Like, and I don't know, that, that's something that you would need more than just a, uh, a demo ride for here because yeah, I mean, this is fun for ripping around town right now, but I really truly wonder like over a long period of time, is this going to be a motorcycle that is comfortable at highway speeds? Is going to be reliable because that is one of the things that plagued this bike from the launch is people are having all kinds of electric issues with it I've seen. So they've had a while to come out. I think they're better now, but again, only time will tell. Let's throw this shit in. Woo! This thing buggies. I've said that probably about a hundred times. My, my vocabulary is obviously, see there's a rattle already. Like, come on, dude, this is a $28,000 motorcycle and I'm hitting bumps here and I'm hearing something rattle up in the front of the fairing. That would get really old if I'm going down the highway and I have to listen to that all day. Oh, the tunnel wraps are good. I dig it. I really dig it. They've made a good motorcycle here. It's fun to ride, sounds good. Looks okay, again. Looks would probably be my biggest detractor from this motorcycle. It's not exactly what I'd call a great looking bike, but you only have so many different ways to do a front fixed fairing here. I really hope the exhaust gets picked up through the mic because it is a very, very barky sound. Yeah, awesome motorcycle. Nice job, Indian. So I've officially challenged the Challenger. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I rode my road glide to the dealership here. And then I uh, first bike I wanted to hop on was the Challenger. And let me tell you, I was not disappointed. This thing moves. And yeah, that's gonna wrap it up for this one. We'll, we'll do a little outro off the motorcycle here, but killer bike. Feels absolutely great. Great noises, really good suspension, and man, power for days. It really has a, uh, a good feel on the power there. So powering off the bike, I'm gonna power off my uh, gear here, and I will catch you guys in the next clip. So that's gonna pretty much wrap it up for the Indian Challenger review. I just wanted to hit on a couple quick thoughts before we go ahead and close this video out. Overall, that bike smashes the Rogue Glide on paper and pretty much in riding it. I just want to say that the bike has a ton of more power than a stock 107 or a 114. The suspension blows it out of the water, both in performance and in comfort. Due to that added travel, you don't feel any kind of potholes with the bike nearly as much as you do on the Rogue Glide. And the lean is just so much more confidence inspiring. And don't get me wrong, that's one of the things that's most impressive about my Rogue Glide is how eager it is to lean. But with this Challenger, it's even better. The bike, just you don't feel like you're gonna drag the floorboards anytime soon. The tip-in is so much better and there's so much more feeling of lean angle. Also, the bike feels much more small than a Harley-Davidson touring motorcycle. I'd almost place this between a soft tail and a touring bike if you're comparing it to Harleys and you're familiar with that. Even though it's a very large bike and the weight is very, very similar to a Rogue Glide, the bike just feels smaller. The fairing feels smaller, the tank feels more narrow, your feet feel like you're in a lower seating position, and it just kind of gives you the more sporty aspect of it, which again, what the bike is going for. So, you know, you've got the power, you've got the suspension, you've got the feel, it's great, right? The areas where I would say this bike kind of misses short is Indian build quality. Me and three people were all at this demo day, we all rode the Challengers, and all of us had some sort of build quality issues. My bike actually shut off as it was running, waiting to leave the parking lot, so I had to turn it back on. And then this was a common issue with everybody is that the fairings rattled. We were on different bikes, the Challengers. There was like three or four different ones and we all rode different ones and all of us had fairing rattles. Mine rattled at high RPM and over bumps. And again, on a bike of that price, it's brand new. It really shouldn't be doing that. And then there was also the issue on my particular Challenger of idle surging. So when I'd be sitting at a stoplight and again, V-twins don't idle perfectly smooth, but this was almost like it was dying. It would bounce high and then bounce low and then bounce high. It, like it, it couldn't find a sweet spot to idle. Which again, on a bike at that price, you don't know if this is just an early production issue or if it's something that you're gonna see with all of them. So it's something to be aware of when looking at these motorcycles. So build quality is really the only thing that would be preventing somebody from taking the leap into a bike like this. But man, when it's working right, the power is great, the sound is great, the feeling is great, the suspension is great. It, it beats the Rogue Glide in every measurable aspect. But the strangest thing about a bike like this for me is that I just don't see a place for it totally in my garage because it's that performance bagger. And my thing is, this isn't a bike that is like a regular touring bike where it's, you know, a big cruiser 
like a gold wing or you know a rogue glide a street glide or even a uh, you know an indian a, a venture or an eluder not an indian a uh, yamaha venture or eluder this is kind of that performance bagger to where if you want a touring bike you're gonna get a touring bike but if you want a performance bike you're probably not gonna look at a bagger you're gonna look at something that's more performance oriented like a sport touring bike or even a sport bike so it's kind of that hard in the middle i know people want the best of both worlds but a lot of times it's hard you got to draw that line one way or the other so again performance it's great Build quality could use some work. And that's going to wrap it up for this one. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I will catch you guys in the next video.